So let me take some examples. All right, you have seen enough theory, I guess. I think theory is relatively simple. I hope you understand that. Um, so okay. So this is again something that I've sort of created, but not too far away from reality. Okay, so again, a sort of concocted example, but not too far from reality. Okay, this is a, a, a relatively uh, standard structure. Okay, um, typically you will see this kind of a structure in rotating systems again. So, and, and this term would usually be here. Yeah, but I have sort of split, switched it because. Uh, otherwise it becomes a slightly tough example okay uh, we can look at the more tougher one also later but for now let's look at this okay aim is stabilization which means that i want x omega to be uh, l infinity and x omega to go to zero uh, again we can also do tracking but in steps later on <coughs> let's not worry about it so now how do we start you have seen, what is the first requirement now? Okay, so let us try to identify what is psi by the way, not zeta. <laughs> that is okay, yeah. Uh, here there is no psi, it is the omega state, right? We have the x and the omega state, the integrator and, and also notice that I deliberately made it not look like an integrator. Yeah? That was the purpose of making this example, yeah. The second stage does not have to be a pure integrator. It is not. You see, it's not a pure integrator, which is it's not a big deal, as you will see. Now, tell me something. Uh, what do we say? We assume something nice for this system. What do we assume? For the we start with the first system, right? That's the whole idea. You start with the first system. What do we assume for the first system? Huh? Yes, but but. Yeah, so existence of a K naught X and existence of a CLF, right? What is it for the system? Very simple, scalar. What is a CLF? What is the K naught X, you think? So, step one, guess v0 x and k0 x yeah for this system for the first subsystem we always start with the first subsystem that's how backstepping begins what is v0 x what is k0 x anything give me some choices anything that comes to your mind i mean you've now seen enough lyapunov candidates and lyapunov functions and so on give me whatever anything Yes? No, just V0 X. You always start with the first subsystem, forget the second, huh? What is it? X square. Okay, thank you, thank you. My hearing is bad, sorry. So V0 X equal to X square. I want to test this. Okay, alright. Uh, as a CLF. Let us see. How do we test? If this is a CLF, let us forget about doing K0X, right? but how do you test that this is a CLF? Do the usual tricks. What is it? V0 dot. Hmm. It is what? Okay, I will take half x square. So, I will get V0 dot as what? X omega. Huh? In this case, omega is the control. Huh? Okay, so omega 
is notionally the control, right? We, because we don't have a second system in our mind as of now. Omega is notionally the control. Okay. So if, if we said that, so what do we need? If the control vector field goes to zero, then the drift vector field has to be negative for all non-zero x. But what is the control vector field? X. Uh, sorry, the, the not the control vector field, but the partial with respect to the control vector field. So Lg V0 is actually X. So so Lg V0 is actually equal to X. And if this goes to 0, means X equal to 0. Okay, and so there is no other possibility. You don't have to check anything is negative or anything. It's trivially true. Okay, implies L F V zero, uh, no need to check. Yeah, it's trivially true. Okay, so such cases are a little bit weird to deal with, but they are okay. That's not a problem because essentially you are saying x will be zero if the control vector field is zero, and that is the equilibrium anyway. So you don't need to go anywhere else. So you are done. That's the logic. Okay, so done. Great. So this is a valid CLF. Valid CLF. What about K0x? How do I choose K0x? What is a good controller for x dot equal to omega system? Linear, simple system, no? What is a good control? You can guess or you can use the Lyapunov function you have to do Lyapunov reshaping. So, fine. You already have V dot is x omega. What should I choose omega as? Minus x. Okay, I will choose minus kx. Just or minus, yeah. Just to keep it a little bit more general, it will work for any positive k, right? So these two are done, okay? Because this will give me implies v zero dot for this case will be minus k x squared, which is negative definite, which is the w x we were talking about. Great, done. Step one accomplished. Step two, go to the next system, right? Construct V X Omega and find control. So, folks, what is V X Omega now? V naught X plus what? Half norm of error between what? Omega minus K zero X, which is Omega plus kx squared yeah it's a scalar so norm is just a square okay excellent so i'm not going to use the formula that we because track stepping is a procedure yeah the purpose of showing you was the procedure so we don't have to go back to those formula and remember and implement those formula it, this is easy okay now what i need to find the control what will i do take the v dot right we've been doing this take v dot Okay, and that's equal to v0 dot x, right, which is basically x omega now, plus omega plus kx, omega dot plus kx dot, right, and this is x omega plus omega plus kx, what is omega dot? It's omega cross x plus the control plus k omega. And I've just substituted for the dynamics. Now what will I do? I use the same trick that I did before. This term here I write the omega as in terms of my new variable that is this omega plus kx. Right? So I can write this as minus kx squared plus x omega plus kx right so this term becomes these two terms 
we did this even in the previous steps right and omega plus kx times omega cross x plus u plus k omega yeah now notice that i already get the nice term right the wx already showed up right it like it did in the general case also this is the wx this wx shows up immediately yeah all i did was write this term in terms of the new variable sort of the new variable that i have created right i want to write everything in terms of the new variables which is x and omega plus kx that i have appearing okay that's what i did i wrote this omega as omega plus kx minus kx and that gives me this guy all right and now i know that this term can be combined with this term okay no need to take transpose either it's too easy right so basically i have minus kx square plus omega plus kx u plus omega cross x plus k omega plus x all right yeah so i already know this is a clf not a problem i mean if you want you can work hard and uh, you, you know that the term multiplying the control is the lf bar v sorry lg bar v and if this is zero means omega equal to minus kx so this entire guy goes away okay and this is negative okay so all good no problem okay all right now uh, what would be the control now if i wanted to use this lyapunov reshaping idea what would be a good controller here to make sure that v dot becomes negative definite just like we did for the general case what would i do minus omega cross x minus k omega minus x cancel everything and then minus omega plus kx right simple yeah and you can run as many simulations as you like this will always work this is a very good controller huh it will work beautifully okay even if you add disturbance so all lyapunov analysis again we did not do this but maybe i will do this maybe a little bit later because you have not done all the design but any lyapunov design or lyapunov uh, reshaping or any of the methods that we do it gives you free robustness robustness is free you know somebody might tell you that oh but this is very theoretical design and you know what will happen if there is noise there is disturbance which is true what how will your control it will perform well okay the it will give you bounded nice performance because robustness is free in lyapunov analysis okay and we'll sort of try to understand basically any clf based design by the way not in general there are if you if you proved or if you use the lasal invariance type methods which allow the use of semi definite functions to prove convergence and stability and so on they will not necessarily give you robustness not guaranteed robustness but anywhere where you use clf based design right which is these whatever we did are doing a clf based designs will always give you robustness for free even if you add disturbance to your simulation and we will give you assignments in this direction okay where you will add noise will add disturbance and so on and you will see that your performance remains close to ideal okay you are not going to deviate it's not going to destabilize your system okay so uh, that's of course one of the features uh, in most cases it is also possible to uh, compute how much the disturbance will impact your performance okay it is possible to compute okay again if i find some time we will cover this how to compute yeah it is also possible to control the effect of disturbance using control gains okay for example what is the control gain here uh, i will mark it this is the control gain yeah unlike your typical pid control uh, you don't have very you know uh, sort of very obvious pid type gains okay here the gains are a little bit more complicated so how you will look at this sort of a controller 
um in fact i would say i would not call even this as a control gain i will call this as the control gain hmm? uh so let's see ha huh. these are the feed forward terms and these are the feedback terms okay uh, the logic is pretty straightforward okay uh, if you look at these terms they are coming about just due to the dynamics of the system okay these are just the dynamics terms coming from here just the dynamics of the system coming from here okay and you are sort of cancelling out the dynamics yeah you are cancelling out the effect of the dynamics yeah these are therefore called feed forward terms yeah it means that you sort of predict what the effect of the dynamics is and you cancel it as best as you can obviously you can never do it well therefore it's called feed forward term the feedback terms like this term and this term and this term are actually the stabilizing terms because this term is coming from here yeah and this term is coming from here okay these are actually the stabilizing terms both of these not just one huh? so these are the feedback terms they are actually the terms that are used to stabilize the system i mean it's a little bit complicated i mean you can also remove this and because there is already a k here and all that so it might seem like there is only one stabilizing term this is not necessarily uh, not necessary to include yeah in fact i could also not have included in the control law at all yeah i can just adjust it in the k as you can see yeah so this term does not even need to be there in the control law therefore let's not worry about this term this is actually the feedback term yeah and you can see again there is a lot of parallels here it's a nonlinear system yeah notice it's a nonlinear system small nonlinearity still a nonlinear system okay but the control that you got is actually a pd control yeah because this is a proportional and a derivative okay this is a proportional term and this is a derivative term so if i again want to label more this is the d term this is d term so p d control and so most aero mechanical systems again p d control works very well usually the control for non linear aero mechanical systems will be p d plus feed forward okay so this is what this is right it's a pd plus feed forward control so applied controls folks or control engineers will typically use this terminology yeah they'll have pd feed forward feedback and these kind of terms but the, the feedback terms are essentially proportional derivative right because you took x and omega this is proportional derivative all right a uh, lot of people also wonder why a lot of pid works a lot of times right i mean it's a big question right why does it work all the time and you know why do we do all this non linear design if pid works so well typically pid will work well when uh, you don't know the feed forward terms very well okay so what the i does is it sort of at least in the linear domain by the way pid works only in the linear domain actually it doesn't work in the non linear domain if your oscillations are too big then it will not work well for you so what you try to do is you try to maintain the system in a very linear zone and then you apply the pid works well okay so in the linear domain these terms will have relatively smallish contributions okay and so the integrator is what creates this internal model right so it adjusts the steady state error okay so these terms so the i is essentially replacement for these terms okay when you don't know these terms too well you would employ an i term okay that's sort of the purpose of you know or sort of the principle why pid will work relatively well yeah it in, it sort of uh i if you the integrator term is what it's a 1 by s right so 1 by s is what it's an integrator right and this system is an integrator right just like most aero mechanical systems i say right it's an it has an integrator built in right so the i term is an internal model yeah a very standard idea that if you have the internal model in the controller internal model of the system in the controller then you can kill the steady state error 
okay you can also prove this i think if you have done a good frequency domain course uh, there is proof of this also yeah i don't remember it but it's not difficult yeah so if your controller has an internal model of the system which is what which is saying i know the feed forward terms what does it mean to have an internal model of the system means i know the feed forward terms right so if you don't know the feed forward terms very well and you are working in a sort of linear domain then 1 by s is a good internal model and that is an integrator and that's in your controller works well yeah cancels your uh, dynamical uh, the feed forward effects and then you have a nice uh, damping reaching yeah proportional is reaching dynamic d is damping what gives you the you know sort of uh, stops your system in some sense you know doesn't have crazy oscillations okay so that's the idea all right so you can say this is a way of uh, designing clfs so that you can come up with controllers Typical controllers for aeromechanical, you will find them to be PD feed forward structure. Okay.